that's Robert Wickens. Jake, he moves from fourth uh, into the fourth position and is now looking for third. Bastion Bourdais also trying to make a move. Right now it's Rossi the leader, then it's Power. Wickens, oh, they're going to make contact. Big contact, car in the air. It's Robert Wickens that spins. Ryan hunter Ray was just underneath him. James Hinchcliffe involved. We have a major mess here exiting turn number two at the Pocono Raceway. The car of Robert Wickens made contact with Ryan Hunter Ray, got airborne, got into the catch fence, and came back to rest on the racetrack, rolled to the inside. A number of cars involved in a spectacular crash here at Pocono Raceway. A red flag condition, a massive incident involving Pietro Fittipaldi, James Hinchcliffe, Ryan Hunter Ray, and Robert Wickens. So far, we see... Uh, we, assume, we think Pietro Fittipaldi, okay. We see Ryan Hunter Ray moving around in the cockpit of his car. Looks like James Hinchcliffe just got out of his. Uh, we see Pietro Fittipaldi, in fact, sitting on the side pot of his car. James Hinchcliffe stepping out of his as we speak. No word yet on Robert Wickens. The, the, the safety crew is there now working on uh, his race car. And it was an absolutely ginormous impact. It was Robert Wickens and Ryan Hunter Ray side by side coming into turn two and uh, looked like Hunter Ray maybe didn't know that Robert Wickens was on the inside of him, turned down into him. Uh, Ryan Hunter Ray spun around and became essentially a launch pad for Robert Wickens who went nose first into the into the outside uh, outside fence and then started spinning around violently and uh, that car absolutely destroyed and uh, saw a big impact as well for James Hinchcliffe and, and certainly Ryan hunter Ray and it just 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 unbelievable I mean we, we heard all these drivers talk before the race about yet yeah, needing to keep a cool head on the opening couple of laps because it is a 500 lap race and then it, it looked like all these guys were just as if it was the final lap here it was absolutely crazy and and, and add to this all the fact that while we're hoping that everything's going to be okay with with Robert Wickens, there's a big old hole now in the fence, so that's going to take some repairs. So it could be a lengthy wait here before we get back uh, back to racing. Uh, well, in the pre-race show, typically we hear from the historian of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Donald Davidson, with his uh, moment in motorsports history. Had to make some adjustments to the schedule. Donald has that for us now. We'll continue to keep an eye on the situation, giving an update after we hear from Donald Davidson with his moment in motorsports history. Welcome back to Pocono Raceway. Mark James Anders Crone. Uh, we are in red flag condition. Eight of 200 laps after a spectacular crash involving Pietro Fittipaldi, uh, James Hinchcliffe, Ryan Hunter Ray, and Robert Wickens. Uh, the AMR IndyCar safety crew, along with track officials, continue their work to get Robert Wickens extricated from his vehicle. It's uh, just to the inside retaining wall off of turn number two. And Jake Query, because of the damage that's been done to the fencing and the outside retaining wall, we anticipate a fairly hefty cleanup. Is that correct? Yes, Mark, on the outside wall here, there are posts that are roughly 10 to 15 yards from one another. They are connected, of course, by that catch fence that lines along to the inside of them. Just at the exit of turn number two, where Robert Wickens' car collided along with Ryan Hunter Ray, just after that collision, that forced Robert Wickens' car to get air. That compromised that catch fence. Now, it did its job. Everything stayed within the racetrack the posts were not compromised but a large part of that we'll call it for a lack of better term metal wiring has been removed down and so therefore i would assume that is going to have to be repaired here in what could be a very long repair robert wickens car came to a stop at the inside of the racetrack at the exit of turn number two and of course the amr indycar safety team is tending to him now then you can see ryan hunter ray's car just before the entrance of turn number three it sits in the middle lane here of this facility james hinchcliffe is some 25 yards in front of where robert wickens is getting medical attention so we hope for the best they are cleaning now all of the debris and the parts of the car part of that lucas oil machine of robert wickens still sits on the racetrack towards the bottom of the racetrack as they go along go around picking up the different carbon fiber and detritus that has collected as a result of this incident and as we speak, Anders Chrome, we're getting a look at the replay now. We see uh, uh, Ryan Hunter, Ray, and Wickens going side by side. Yeah, and it's, it's, oh, it's the worst of circumstances you can imagine. What, wow, that impact for Robert Wickens is absolutely horrific. And all starts with him being, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <sighs> yeah, we just... 
fingers crossed for for Robert Wickens uh, in in this situation. I mean, it was side by side. Uh, again, not sure if Ryan Hunter Ray knew that Robert Wickens was on the inside of him, uh, but Robert Wickens really with nowhere to go, turning into the corner. Uh, Ryan Hunter Ray spinning around and just launching Robert Wickens up into the fence and. Um, Oof, that is. And, and Wickens, as the car got airborne, it started to spin, and uh, it rotated between the no, the front nose of the car and the rear wing of the car. It took turns getting caught up in the catch fence. And again, the catch fence did its job to keep that car from leaving the racetrack and flung it, flung it eventually back to the racetrack and went to the inside. And, and, and really, the only other sort of similar impact I can compare it to is the crash of, of Kenny Breck at, at Texas Motor Speedway, where he got into the fence and started rotating the car so, so violently. And... Uh, Obviously, we know over the course of the the last you know two decades, IndyCar have done a tremendous job with all their technical partners at advancing the safety in every department. Uh, you know, in in the case of these, and we see now, actually, Robert Wickens being extricated from the car. Uh, we see him with some sort of device on his neck to stabilize that. So that is the the biggest area of concern here. Again, don't want to speculate anything, but uh, uh, certainly see him slowly but surely being extricated from the car. Yeah, man, uh, we saw members of the safety crew uh, going along uh, what was interesting to note, Anders. They were going along the separation between the old retaining wall and the safer barrier. There was debris that fell down in there, and they were pulling pieces of debris out, especially at the point of impact where the fence was the most heavily damaged. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, it, it, we know we know it's going to be a, uh, a long repair here, but uh, at the same time, the only thing we really care about at this point is is, is Robert Wickens as they're now putting him onto, onto a stretcher and... Uh, Again, fingers crossed. And uh, we are at a red flag flag condition, and as we said, uh, it, it, it's going to be a lengthy one, so much so that they have uh, told the drivers that they could step out of their vehicles, and uh, all of them got together collectively, and, of course, uh, talking a bit about the start of this race, uh, I'm sure, as we're under this red flag condition, 8 of 200 laps. Michael Young, you said you did manage to hear some radio traffic uh, very early on in that incident. Yes, as soon as they made contact with the wall, Robert Wickens, Pierce Phillips, his race strategist, got on the radio and said, are you okay? Are you okay, Robert? Let us know if you're okay. And he said, just hit your button and just so we can hear radio chatter if you're okay. And obviously the situation, Robert was unable to do so. But as, as you said, Mark James, good sign that we see him being extricated from the car. And again, the AMR IndyCar safety team is the best in the business and nobody else we'd want to have out there than those guys.